Good morning. What message does God send those who have gone into captivity? Our reading today is at Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 18 to 22. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring back the captivity of Jacob's tents, and have mercy on his dwelling places. The city shall be built upon its own mound, and the palace shall remain according to its own plan. Then out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of those who make merry. I will multiply them, and they shall not diminish. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Their children also shall be as before, and their congregation shall be established before me. And I will punish all who oppress them. Their nobles shall be from among them, and their governor shall come from their midst. Then I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach me. For who is this who pledged his heart to approach me, says the Lord? You shall be my people, and I will be your God. So God sends reassurance that the things of joy will return. There will be a return to Jerusalem. There will be children playing in the streets again. There will be rulers who are actually doing the right thing again. God's protection will again be manifest for them. They won't fear for invaders. They won't have Babylonian overlords, but people who serve the true God. And finally, this was interesting. Jeremiah speaks of the covenant being renewed again, right there at verse 22. You shall be my people and I will be your God. That's the covenant. And what about us today? When we look out at the church today, we're embarrassed. We see worldly innovations. We see backtracking, backsliding. We see uh, the following of culture, just, just wholesale. It's just washing in like a flood. Whatever's in the world, we see it happening in the church too. I mean, these are the kind of things that are very depressing for the church. We look for strong leadership and we find wishy-wash. Bible truths, Bible truths are denied and we see pagan tactics used to bring people in to the worship service. And then the members, sometimes the members, it can just barely be called upon to even make it to church, let alone to do some kind of outreach with the church family. Some of our members sort of think that, you know, they've done their part or something. Yeah, we're all in this. This is not just for the pastor. This is not just for the preacher. But, you know, we shouldn't be dismayed. You know, Satan has worked very hard to bring us to this situation of uh, hyper-individualism. That's true. We're very individualistic. We're thinking about ourselves and what we can get very little about what we can do for our local churches. God can help us with that, though. He can bring us back just as he could bring back God's people from Babylon. He can bring us back from wrong places where we are. God hasn't forgotten his church. He's going to raise up fresh servants from among the people, maybe from among some of the very people in your local congregation. And as there were days of joy ahead for Jeremiah's people, off in Babylonian captivity, there are days of joy ahead for us today as we serve him, as we seek to do his will. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we want to be right. Your word shows us a pattern here. Chastening, renewal, realization of some things we were getting wrong, and a restoration if we'll only just join with you in the covenant. Lord, that's what we ask for. That's what we call for. We know the impediment isn't you. The impediment is us. So, Lord, change us, strengthen our faith. Help us to be people of, of the book. And, Lord, help us to hang on and receive these encouragements, even the encouragements that you gave to your people in captivity through Jeremiah. Those are also encouragements for us today. Lord, thank you for your help and blessing. We know that good will triumph over evil. We want to be part of that. So, Lord, use us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So God reminds those discouraged by his chastening that there are beautiful days ahead for them. And if we will draw close to Jesus, there are beautiful days ahead for us. God be with you today as you serve him.